new, new, obviously new week. Uh, got a lot in front of us this week. Got a really good uh, Jackson State team coming in. Uh, very talented, already have played uh, at Miami and uh, at Ole Miss. Both were extremely uh, competitive games. They could have won both of them. Um, I think they lose by five at Miami and lose by 13 at Ole Miss, but uh, it was, I think, a two-point game with about two or three minutes to go in the first half at Ole Miss, and um, they had some foul trouble with their big kid, uh, Amisha, who played for me at Mississippi State uh, her freshman year. So she's a monster. She's really good. Uh, she can wreck uh, an offense, great rim protector, uh, just incredible rebounder. Um, and so we, we're, we've got our hands full with, with her. Um, I got a four player that's really tough uh, to deal with, uh, Woodard. And, uh, and so it's, uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us, y'all, uh, quite, quite honestly. I mean, they're a two-time, I think, champion of their conference, so they know how to win. Uh, great coach, coaching staff, a lot of respect for them. Uh, lived in the state with them for, obviously, for a while. And, um, we've played each other uh, because it, it's made us better. So um, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my team, and it's going to be imperative that we better have, they better give them our full attention uh, because this is a, a, a really um, a team that can, can create problems for you. So um, I don't ever get ahead of myself, y'all. I know you probably want to talk about some, an, another one, but the most important one is the one tomorrow night. And, uh, uh, obviously, Aliyah has been playing well for us. Um, had some, has had some really big games for us early in the season, and uh, we need her to continue to to do that. I know you don't want to look ahead, but looking behind at the CSUN game, the turnovers, when you went back and looked at film, was that something that they did on defense, or was that a concern you have with your team? Yeah, it's a concern just because I didn't think they were forced. I just thought we were lackadaisical, lacked focus. Um, lacked attention to what was going on around us. And, um, and you know, you had two players with five each. You know, that's a lot of turnovers for a player to have in a game. And, and so it's, uh, I think when you, when you start breaking it down, I showed our team all 21 turnovers. And I don't think there was one turnover where somebody created it. We just kind of gave it to them. And so I think that's just a real lack of focus on our part. I mean, you guys saw it. I was pretty unhappy the whole first half because I thought we just, as a group, had a lack of focus. I think we regrouped at halftime and played much better the second half. But, you know, this team's like that. I mean, they're going to probably be like that. We're young. We have some youth. We have some inexperience issues. And, um, you know, we're, we're a little dinged up right now, y'all. It's nothing major, but, you know, Leah Moore being out really affects my rotation as far as who I can sub and how I can sub. She really allows me to have some flexibility with Audrey, and and uh, I, I'm really pigeonholed with Audrey right now. So um, we need to get Kendall back uh, and 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 Kobe uh, because those are two guards that really provide a competitive atmosphere every day in practice, and and they're going to be kids that are going to be able to help us win, and um, and so we need to get them back, and obviously the sooner the better. Have you uh, liked the, the the way things have gone in practice this week? the way they responded to kind of some of the things you pointed out to them. Yeah, so typically in basketball, y'all, the day after a day off is miserable. And yesterday was really good. I thought we were really competitive. Yes, first time in maybe a week where we were really competitive, got after each other, pushed each other. We had a great game of Longhorn, um, two good games of Longhorn. And uh, Longhorn's a four-minute game. You, you, it's running clock. You try to score as fast as you can. You're pressing each other. You're just getting up and down. You don't run any sets. You're just trying to score as quick as you can. And and um, I thought yesterday was really good. So I'm anxious to get back with them today and see if we can carry that over because I think that's the key to this team is you got to stack practices. You know, if you can stack practices, now you got a chance to get better. And you know, Tasha's back. I need Tasha to play, but she didn't practice last week. Uh, practiced one day prior to playing CSUN. Um, and so obviously she played eight and a half minutes. I needed her to play 18 and a half. But if you don't practice, it's hard for me to put you in in front of somebody else who's been there every day. So we need Tasha to have another good day today. And, and I need her to play because the more she plays, the more comfortable she's going to get. And y'all have seen her. She can be a, a shot blocker, shot alter. She's long and uh, can run. 
So we, we could use that. How, how much can you learn about your team in a game like tomorrow night with what's ahead? Kind of the same thing with Stanford and Tennessee. Like how much do you learn about the maturity of your team and how they handle it? Yeah, so again, every team does something different and unique, and this one tomorrow night's no different. I mean, they got monster four or five players. Uh, if we don't put a butt on their five players, she will destroy us. And, and if that doesn't get the attention of my fives and my bigs, then, then we're going to have problems. We're gonna, I mean, it, the kid is really good, and uh, um, I think their guard play is confident. Uh, they won't be intimidated. They won't be scared. And, and so this is good. This is what we need. Uh, we need to play good people. And uh, I think this is, again, uh, I'm more interested I've been seeing how we respond, knowing that we weren't ready to play Saturday. What's it going to look like tomorrow night? Are we going to be ready? Who's going to make sure we're ready? Other than the coaching staff, who in that locker room is going to go, hey, it's game day. Let's have a good shoot around. Let's get on the floor early. Let's get ready to play. Because I think that's kind of where we're at right now in the evolution of this team. Along those same lines, what do you think? about this team in those situations to kind of, you've got a big game ahead of you. There's, you know, there's a lot out there, but you've got to focus in on the moment. Um, I think the biggest thing is that, um, I think the biggest thing is that we all just stay level-headed. Like we all come into practice every day and like we know it's going to be intense and we just every day try to make sure we're doing the right things, like not turning the ball over in practice and focusing on the things that he goes over in film, maybe like transition defense or things like that. Like whatever the key detail is that we need to focus on, we try to take it day by day, focus on one thing at a time to prepare. Vic, the three members of your all boot team, are they going to be available tomorrow or are they also all still out? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't. I don't have any update for you. Um, you know, they're, they're, yeah. Is Aaliyah officially, is that a foot or an ankle? Uh, more? Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an ankle. Yeah. Aaliyah, you chose to come play for Vic twice at this time, and he doesn't seem like a coach who's going to be easy on you or, you know, it's not going to be a cakewalk to play for him. Why did you choose to play for him not once but twice? Um, because I feel like he knows what I'm capable of, and sometimes I don't see it right in the moment. Like, I get frustrated because he doesn't let me do everything that I want to do, but, like, that's not how you play basketball. And, like, it's it's different. Like, I'm being pushed every day. I'm uncomfortable, but I know that I'm getting better. Like, I feel myself getting faster, stronger, and making better decisions every day. I think the biggest thing with me is I wanted to be pushed. I didn't want anybody to sugarcoat anything for me. I wanted them to be honest. If I was messing up, I wanted to be told that I was messing up instead of somebody sugarcoating it and telling me it's sweet because, of course, that's not how you become successful in life. So I just felt like I wanted to be somewhere where I was going to be pushed, and I knew that he was going to be honest with me no matter the situation. Now, obviously, it was probably a little easier since you had Vic here. Kiana was here, so you're familiar with her. But how was it getting integrating yourself with a team of you know, 13 people you didn't really know before you came to campus? Um, it was pretty easy. At first, I was like a tough cookie, you know. I kind of have a hard time opening up with people, but like, they were pretty easy to talk to. We all kind of like the same things. Everybody gets along in their own weird ways. But like, as a group, I think all of them are pretty cool. Like, we all get along. We hang out off the court, do things together all the time. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a people person, but like, it was pretty easy. Like when she became available and was in the portal, and how much of a discussion was it to go after her? It wasn't any discussion. I, I wanted her. I mean, I was the one in the room that, I mean, I know what I'm getting in with Aaliyah. Um, but to me, it was, it was somebody that I, I really wanted on my team. I wanted to coach her again. I wanted to, I wanted her. She challenges me just as much as she thinks I challenge her. Um, I probably got on her and coached her as hard as anybody I've ever coached on, on, on Saturday. Um, but I care deeply about her. Um, I know what her goals are. I know the price she's paid to get here. I know what her mother's done for her to get her to this moment in her life. And as I told her, you know, um, Saturday after the game and in the locker room, there's nobody that wants it more for her than I do. And, um, and like she said, she knows I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And, 
she's not, uh, you know, she's, she's young, she's a kid. She won't, she wants you to think that she's a, uh, an old, uh, old veteran and, and wily and she is wily, but, um, you know, she, she's, she's still growing, you know, but here's the thing, y'all, I've coached two kids that have the confidence that uh, Leah Matharu has. Leah Matharu and Victoria Vivians. Victoria was a first team All-American playing in the league right now. Like, Aliyah Matharu is as confident as anybody I've ever coached. And sometimes I have to reel that in a little bit because she thinks she can go against 6'6 and score sometimes, and she never gets it out of her hand. And, but she still thinks that's a good shot. Again, I like her confidence, and she has no fear. But she's got to come to an understanding that some of those aren't very good. Um, but what she does is she's going to live off the one out of ten that she makes like that. And the other nine, you know, I'm over there having to tell her, hey, we might want to rethink that, but she's, she's going to live off that one out of ten. And, you know, she made a really tough one at Stanford. I don't know if you remember. Drove down the left side of the lane, threw one almost off the shot clock, and it came down and went in. And went in. And, but I've seen her make a bunch of tough shots, y'all, a bunch of tough ones. So, again, uh, I love Aaliyah. Um, I, I love coaching her. I love her confidence. Um, and, and, and that's part of coaching. It's just, you know, my job is to help her get to be the best she can be. And, you know, she does some good things right now. Y'all, she's done some great things for us, but she'll tell you, yeah, she had 27 at Tennessee. What did I show her in film? I showed her the defense in the, you know, overtime in the fourth quarter. Box Cause outs. yeah, box outs, rebounds, all that, you know, that's, that's what I showed her to let her know, Hey, you know, you can't trade, you're getting six and giving up seven, you know, in that stretch. You know, that's, we've got to understand there's, it's both ends of the floor, right? We don't have offense and defense coming in and out. So, and she's gotten so much better on that end, but she's still got a ways to go. And, and so, but I, again, man, I, I want it as bad for her as, as uh, maybe more than she does at times. And, and that's why I'm really passionate with her. And, uh, and so, and she'll tell you, I'm the same way with her about her grades, too. You know, I, I want her to do well there. I want her to, you know, I, I, her mama. You don't want to get sideways with Miss Brenda now. No. Um, she don't want to, and I don't want to. So we got to make sure our grades are good as well as our basketball. Yes, sir. <laughs> just, to, just to hear that comparison, what, what does that mean to you? Obviously, you know, history, Mississippi State, Victoria, and everything there. What does that mean to you to just even hear him say that? I mean, it means a lot. He told me that before he left, and then Victoria told me the same thing. She was like, I think you should have went with him. And I was like, maybe I should have, you know? But like, the opportunity presented itself again, and here I am. I think, I don't think I've ever had a coach that's been as invested in me as Coach Schaefer. So like, I take it very personally when I don't, you know what I'm saying, when I don't do the right things or when I mess up, and sometimes I let it, I let it throw me off and I get messed up, but it's only because I want to do the right thing. Like, I want to do the best thing, what's best for the team, and, like, just help in any way that I can. So I think personally it means a lot. I don't think I've ever had a coach that's been so invested in me as Coach Schaefer, so. Coach talked about uh, the price you paid to be here and you mentioned your mom. Can you tell us a little bit about your story, your journey, and what's led you here? Um, I come from a single-parent household. I'm third-generation Washingtonian. It's just my mom and I. She said that having me was like having 10, so she didn't want to have any more kids. Um, for the most part, I went to private school. Always wanted to get a private education, played in the WCAC. And really, it's just always been me and her. She was a nurse's aide when I was in high school. Now, she kind of just took some time off. And I have an older parent, so it's different. You know, she's very wise, and sometimes I just want to vent and talk to her, but she's like, you got to breathe, you got you know what I'm saying, just slow down, take your time. Um, so my my experience with my mom is, I say it's just like any other parent with their daughter. We have our ups and downs, but like I'm taking my mom's advice over anybody, and that was the first person I talked to before I made my decision. And she said, "You don't need to talk to anybody else. I think you should go there." And I picked up the phone and I called him and I told him I was ready. Like her, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but her mom used to get up early in the morning. And late at night, they would go to the park, and she would sit in the car with the lights on the car. 
so that she could shoot. Isn't that right? Yeah, shoot free throws. So, I mean, that, you know, her mom providing that opportunity for her after she worked all day to put her daughter in the car, drive up to the park, pull up next to the court, to put your bright lights on so your daughter can shoot. Because that's the only thing that was available for her. I mean, guys, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's why I want it for her. That's why I want it for her mother. Um, you know, I come from a pretty close family myself, so I have a real appreciation for that. And um, that to me, just how blessed she is to have Miss Brenda. But again, it, it says so much. Hey, a lot of parents ain't gonna do that, y'all. I'm just telling you. You know, they're not they're not gonna do that. They've had a long day. They've had a rough day. They're not doing that. And Miss Brenda did that for her for a long time to give her the opportunity to become a player that she is today. And that's why, you know, Saturday, I was on her. I coached her hard and wasn't pleased with her. And she's one of them that had five turnovers. She didn't shoot it well. Um, but for me, and, and so you go, okay, well, Vic, take it easy, man. The kid just had 17 in the fourth quarter at Stanford, helped you win the game. She had 27 at Tennessee that kept you in it. What's the big deal? The big deal is, is that that's my standard for her. And the standard that we live by today is the standard. So is it okay to just let her go out there and stink it up? I don't think Miss Brenda would want her to go out there and stink it up. And she knows that that's not what we're about. And so that's my challenge with her is to wake up every day and be the best you can be. Again, I'm on her about her grades too, about her classes, as I am with all of our student athletes. But there's just a standard that I want her to embrace because if she's going to get to where she wants to get to, she's going to have to do that. And so, um, again, I talked to her after the game, and, you know, I kind of thought I was probably too hard on her. And, and we had a good conversation. She said, Coach, I need it, you know. Um, it, it's just something that, that she knows, and I know that it's necessary because, you know what, that's what's going to allow her to be awesome. It's, going to, it's what's going to allow her to be the best she can be. And, uh, you know, our team, our team, we can't have her go two for 11. That's the bottom line. She can't do that. And us win. Well, yeah, how, how, old, how old were you when your mom was taking you out to the court? To... Um, I was like, I think I started in middle school. And then, like, every day in high school, I finally got to, like, use the gym and go to school. So I was in, like, from fourth to sixth grade, we went to a park. So, yeah. Was there, was there a certain park or park was this there? Yeah, so I lived like right by a recreation center, but like it was a rough neighborhood and I was scared to go in there by myself. So I just like always used the outside court because they always say shooting on double room will help your shot. And at the time I didn't have a jump shot. I could just make layups. So I learned how to shoot on a double room and then that's when kind of went from there, yeah. Whose idea was it? Do you remember if you brought it to your mom or if she brought it to you? It was my mom. She always, like, I don't know, I get nervous at the free throw line. And she was always like, you got to make your free throws. Like, those are free points. And so every day we would go up there and I'd shoot four sets of 25 in a row and, like, see the score and just go from there. Is it, is it more nerve-wracking shooting free throws in front of your mom? Or is it more doing it now, you know, on the road to Tennessee? Or it's more in front of my mom because she's so funny. Like, at first she didn't know it was called a free throw. So she used to scream, make your three throw. I'm like, that's not the right name. But, like, she always telling me I need to shoot the ball up. And it's just funny hearing that from her because she never played basketball. So, so y'all have struggled a little bit with free throw shooting this season. Do we need to bring Miss Brenda in? Is she going to have free throw coach for y'all? No, really. She's really good at that. I don't know how she even figured that out. But... Right after the game, she was like, you missed two big free throws when we played Tennessee. I was like, I know, I don't know what happened. I got to the line, I just was overthinking. She's like, no, you shot the ball right at the rim. And I was like, my bad, I'm sorry. I'll get it up next time. But remember, she made some big ones at Stanford. So, you know, hey, you got the, the biggest thing about free throws, you got to want to be there. You know, when the game's on the line, you got to want to be there. You got to want to be at the line. and. Again, I think Aaliyah is one of those kids that 
she's confident, you know. See, it's just like a golfer standing over a shot on 18 with the, you know, the lead at stake and it's a tie. It, you're, you're, everybody, you know, you're, you and your component there are both 18 under. You stand over that ball, if you're going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, you're probably hooking it, pulling it, leaving it short, duffing it, whatever. But if you rely on your muscle memory, and I tell them all the time, see it, feel it, trust it. I mean, that's what those guys are standing over a 160 yard shot into 18 are doing. They're seeing it, feeling it, and trusting it. And that's what you got to do. And, you know, for us, uh, that's probably about the only thing I tell them unless I think their feet are all jacked up or something. Um, I'm all about, you got to see it, feel it, trust them. You got to want to be there. So, and, and when we shoot them every day, I mean, we're, we're responsible for making 50 a day. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Praise the Lord and welcome.